Do you have some patio furniture that's really well built, but the fabric is getting a little threadbare, it's worn, sagging, maybe tearing, maybe has some holes in it, and you'd like to refresh your patio furniture without having to buy a whole new set? Well, stick around and I'm gonna show you the easiest way to get your patio furniture from looking like this to, to this in the easiest way possible. much better okay so when you go ahead and you redo your chairs you want to first of all make sure that you leave the chair fabric area connected to the chair because by having it attached to the frame it's going to give you something of structure so when you're pulling the fabric out of this channel and the cord out of this channel that you have something to pull against otherwise if you take it off and you're going to try and pull it with your hand it's never gonna happen. So definitely start out leaving it this way. You're just gonna take the simple scissors and you're just gonna cut it right up the middle. This is going to release the tension from the chair itself where the retaining bars are keeping it tight. And that's all you're going to do to start it now. All right. Now that we've gotten the fabric cut up the middle here, what we're going to do next, we're going to pop the caps off on the bottom. Now, when we go to pop the caps off on the bottom, since these chairs are so old, most of these have just been breaking off. I do try and work them out of there to hope that we can get the middle out, but usually the top's just going to break off. It's going to leave the middle in there. I'm gonna show you the best way to pull that little piece of plastic out of there when you go to recap the ends later. We're not gonna worry about it now because as long as we get the cap off of it, then that'll open up the channel in the front there. Now, what the other people are gonna tell you to do then is they're gonna tell you, they're gonna tell you to grab a hold of this on the bottom and just try and start pulling it out of there. And I'm gonna tell you, good luck doing it all. You can see that it's shaped exactly like the chair and all of these bends in the chair. So this stuff, when you go to try and pull it out, is gonna work and you got the fabric on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you now a little bit easier way to go ahead and get these off of here. For this next part here, you're gonna need a scissors and a razor blade knife or a utility knife is what I'd recommend. Because you're gonna start out at the top here and you're gonna cut this with your scissors because you got this doubled over part where it's uh, sewed here at the top and for the pocket. So it's gonna be easier to cut through that. Now, once you get cut through that, then what you can do is take a utility knife now you want to make sure that where you're cutting is on the other side of this pocket because what we want to do is free up this space so we don't have to pull the fabric and the cord through what we're going to do is we're going to slip this all the way down with this utility knife be careful so you don't end up damaging the metal here and making a sharp corner or something but then this way once we get this split down there we can pull the fabric out this way instead of having to pull it all the way down. And I guarantee you this is gonna be much easier. So it's as simple as this. You can use the chair as a guide or the, what I do is I usually try and put the blade just on the other side of the cord here. So when I'm pulling it down, I'm not dragging it on the metal, but I'm dragging it on the plastic cord, slitting it, but not slitting it all the way on the bottom because I do wanna make sure that I still have enough that I can grab over here so I can mash this and pull it through. So just kinda of go slow. When you're first getting it started, you don't wanna cut yourself either. But once you get it started here, you can go fairly quickly down here.
All right, now that we've got it split up the middle and we've gone ahead and on one side, went ahead and cut the seam, what I usually will do is take a really small, thin, um, narrow screwdriver and I'll use this to push the cord in because the cord from people sitting in this chair and this fabric stretching on this cord for the last 18 years has really pushed this cord all the way up against the top, especially in these bend areas. So by pushing this cord down, what you're gonna do is make it easier so when we go to pull this fabric out, we're gonna be able to get it out of here. Now what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit, but then what I want to do is I want to get this fabric out onto the other side because once I pull it, a little bit of this fabric out of here, it'll just take off. But you do have to get it started. And sometimes this can be just a little bit of work because the whole idea of that cord is to hold that fabric in there. Now, once I have it out like this, it's pretty simple that I'm just gonna go ahead now and pull on it. If it gets stuck here, that's where you're just gonna push it in. It's most likely gonna be on these curves are where you're going to get the most resistance. So I make sure I just kind of mash it down in all spots. Sometimes you have to hold it down while you're pulling to get it to release. But you'll notice that there's gonna be a lot of dirt in here, which is natural because it is outdoor patio furniture. I live in the desert. There's always dirt blowing somewhere. Once you get down to the bottom here, this is where you then just can pull it straight down and get it off of here. You can see that took a little bit of work, but it's not going to be anything like trying to pull that fabric all the way down there. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead. We'll do the other side thing on the other side there too. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you now how we're going to get this cord out of here. So the way now that we're going to get the cord out of here is we're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to kind of push down on this cord and then you should be able to get it to come out just a little bit. As long as you can get it to come out a little bit, if you got a pair of vice grips, you wanna use those. If not, a regular pair of pliers will work, but the vice grips are gonna hold on to it, so you're just gonna use it to pull it out of this channel. So let me grab my vice grips. Take your vice grips and open them up to maybe really only what half the distance of what that cord actually is. This way when you bite down on it, it'll bite the teeth into it and it's gonna hold on to this cord good. Now, once you got your vice grips on here, you can take and just pull it. Now, it is gonna jam up here again in these high spots because this cord is kind of sunbaked and it has been shaped to where it's been sitting most of its life. So usually first getting it going is a little bit of work, but once you get it going, it comes out fairly quickly. But it is a matter of getting it going first. And as you can see, there is not much give to that. So that's gonna make it work pulling it out of there. And then when you look inside your channel, you're gonna see all that desert dirt or California dirt, South Dakota dirt, whatever kind of dirt you got. The 
last chore we have to do here is to redo the ottomans. I will say the ottomans are going to be the easiest one to finish up because with the ottoman, you only have these four bolts that are gonna come out. There's no extra stretcher bars because all of these bars are fixed on the frame itself. So we're gonna go ahead, we're still gonna pop these heads off of here. I'm sure they're just gonna break off, I'm fine with that. After I go ahead and get those popped off of there, then just like the chairs, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna split this seam all the way up here, push that cord in, pull it out, and then we'll be ready to repaint these bad boys as well. kind of the center aluminum pin and I'm finding it leaves the metal sleeve and the part of the plastic so what you're gonna end up doing with this is you're gonna end up drilling these out and since the ones I bought are going to be a little bit bigger than these are you're gonna go up one drill bit size from what the hole is and bore that out so then you'll be able to just tap in the screws. You'll be able to see where the previous ones were. We want to try and put them in the same spot. All right. If you drill out the hole too big, squirt some caulk in there or some liquid nail and that'll hold it in there. And now we're ready to wash it and give it a repaint job. I felt weak, I can't move my feet, but now I'm miles away. Sometimes I get embraced, so effortlessly, you left me with nothing. sling put on to the chair. I'm going to just kind of show you some tips and tricks that I found that have worked out pretty good. With my spline, um, I have the quarter inch spline. Originally I tried going down to a smaller spline thinking that maybe that would make it easier to sling. Made it easier to sling but then also it made the seat looser and um, I just knew over time I was gonna be more dissatisfied, so I went back to the original quarter inch spline. But with the spline, it is a nice tight fit up in here, so when you're hitting those corners, you have to push hard. So when you're gonna be slinging the fabric, it's even gonna be harder because now you don't only have the spline, you also have the fabric around it adding to the girth. So what I'm doing here, just to make sure I have enough spline and don't run out, not sure how much extra they gave to me, I just leave it attached to the roll and I go ahead and I run it up on the one side. The big thing is, is as you're putting the fabric in here, you always want to make sure that your seam is to the inside of the chair. Um, because if you have it on the outside of the chair, you're going to realize now you're pulling that fabric back out and doing it again. So do make sure you do the right side. I do lead it with the extra maybe inch, inch and a half on the front end. So that kind of helps push up through these corners. So then when I get to the part with the fabric, it's an easier transition because now this part is already past that bend. Um, then when I get up on the end, my chair on the top is sealed off. So once this gets up to the top, it's just gonna push up on the underside of this it only goes up a short distance, 
but then it'll hold the spline in there. So then I can pull the fabric all the way up here and then pull it tight up against the top. You really want to make sure that you get it pulled as tight up at the top and then you're going to pull it as tight down onto the bottom here or otherwise you're going to have a sag in your seat and you're going to be dissatisfied. So here's how we're going to start it. We're going to go ahead now and take again, run this up here. Your toughest part is going to be making sure that you then get your fabric up in here as well as in the back. A lot of times when you're trying to pull this in front here, it gaps up in the back and then gets stuck. So you really want to make sure that you're not hooking up on the bottom of either of these because then you might end up staring your, tearing or damaging your fabric. So what I do is I kind of do a combination push and pull is what I found has worked best. So again, this first part is always going to be the worst part. Once you get past this first bend, then it usually moves much, much quicker. But I keep basically needing to pull it back so it's kind of going in straighter as well as really straightening out the fabric. You wanna make sure you don't fold it over too much <clears throat> because that's where you're most likely gonna end up tearing your fabric if you, tr if you fold it over too much, too soon. Now, I do find once you have this loaded up farther, then you can let it go over on the one side here, but you really have to keep making sure that you're keeping that fabric straight down on the spline so you aren't going to tear it. So what you're doing is you're pulling with this hand and you're pushing up from the bottom, trying to keep it as straight and tight on that fabric as possible. Occasionally, you do have to then pull the fabric back Kind of get it off of there again. So you can feed it up and then I'm flipping it back again.
as you get closer towards the end, you're really going to be doing a lot of bunching and pulling. At this point in time, what I'm doing is I'm really making sure that I'm holding the fabric off of the curve to reduce as much of the strain as possible. So I can keep pushing this, and as I'm pushing it and it's bunching here, it's pushing and inching this up. I mean, we truly are sometimes working with a matter of a quarter of an inch or a half of an inch that you're actually moving the fabric um, as you're going up the tube. So after you've moved it that much there, now you can pull up at the top. However, I find sometimes you still want to leave it bunched here so you can more easily pull it versus when you have it all tight, that's where it's really hard to move it. Because this final part here worked out much better than the earlier parts. So now, once we got it all down there, the big thing is, is to pull this up. Also making sure that this spline has a little extra at the top. So you wanna push it in from the bottom while making sure it's up and behind here. Now that we know we got that right, we're just gonna pull this and we're gonna pull it all the way to the very top because then that'll create a nice tight back once we get it on this other side with our stretchers in there. And then most importantly, we wanna have that nice tight seat. We're going to first clip this off on the bottom here. Then we're gonna unbolt this side from here and here. So this side will lay loose while we're going ahead and running the fabric up on that side. Um, because you aren't gonna be able to stretch it this full Just distance. Just go ahead and use a pair of heavy duty wire cutters to cut the cord off. And since I know I've got that pushed all the way up there now, I'm gonna just put this at the very base and then snip it. Once I've snipped it off, now when I'm done, I'm gonna take a hammer, I'm gonna hammer it all the way up in there. And as I put on the cap, this fabric will be pulled down tight in the seat. So that way the fabric won't run up on you as you sit on it and it's not gonna pull down from the top either, so it'll keep your stretch nice and tight. Now that you got the one side done, what I did is I went ahead and unattached it. We're gonna still leave the side that we're gonna sling attached. You always want so make sure that it is attached securely to your frame. After you got the one side done, what I usually do is kind of roll it up into the fabric a little bit here. So I protect the metal, make sure I'm not dragging it on the ground by keeping my old blanket here underneath it. So, I've already refinished the finish one time. I certainly don't want to get it messed up now. So we're just going to do the same thing on this side. It's just, just like before, load up the cord in here, have it out about a good inch and a half. We're going to go ahead then and get it started. Again, the getting started part is always going to be the most important because that's where you want to get the fabric out of the back and off the side so it's not holding it up. So you're able to go ahead, feed it up into the channel and pull it while you're feeding it. But some sides you're gonna find where that channel might just be 
a little bit bigger and go in much easier than the other times. But the thing is, is always making sure you're straightening out this fabric so it doesn't bunch up and get stuck in there. Now that I got it going, this is where now we do more of this push and pull function here. This one definitely moving a little better. That's another thing when you're repainting your chairs, make sure you don't get too much paint inside the channel because that causes more friction when you got that smooth metal in there. It really seems to slide better and that maybe what's going on here is maybe I just had a little extra paint on that side and made it tougher to work with because I'm already almost to the bend here where on the other side I was it was really fighting me for quite a long time here. You got both sides slung in the track again the second side went much easier than the other side I literally worked on that other side for over an hour this side was done in a fraction of the time because it did move up much more smoothly but now that you have it on both sides of the rails your biggest task is going to be to try and get this onto the other side of this hump here so it'll screw in attach, that's gonna stretch it out on the bottom. And then we have another retaining bar that's gonna go across here. We got these that are gonna attach here. We have another retaining bar that's gonna be in the center of the chair. And then we're gonna have the top piece here. What we're gonna start with for simplicity's sake is we're gonna stretch it by using these bolts. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna loosen up this bolt here first. I'm gonna give it that about extra inch um, of screw length out. So that way I can stretch it across there, get the bolt in, stretch it that way, and then I'll stretch that tight there, tight here. And then I'm gonna need to use a stretcher bar to get it over that hump. Okay, so here's where we're gonna use the Allen wrench now. We're just gonna go ahead and tuck, loosen this bolt up to give it that extra distance on the stretch. And now that portion is done.
Sometimes I 